Yeah, this game is kind of garbage. In this video, I dedicated an entire week of my free time on improving the game feel and visual design of my game, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that this feels 10 times better to play. According to Wikipedia, Game feel sometimes referred to as look feel or game juice is the intangible, tactile sensation experienced when interacting with video games. In simple terms, it's doing things to make your game more primitively fun to play, whether that be adding particles to your game or making your animations feel more satisfying. Of course, I will also be improving the visuals in my game, because if a game looks good, then it passively makes the game feel better as well. Before we begin, let me start by giving some context on the game that I'm making. I'm making a game called Sewer Oasis with Bevy and Rust. This is currently the second devlog in the series. Originally, this video was going to be about how I implemented a weapon system in my game with crafting and other mechanics, but I decided to take a step back because the basic mechanics of my game needed a lot of polishing first. Either way, subscribe for more devlogs and to help motivate me to work on this game. I'm in Aceprite right now and we're going to be updating our player's animations to make them feel better. Let's start off by improving the jump animation because this animation is the one that needs the most work. It feels extremely stiff at the moment. There is a term in animation called squash and stretch, which can help you make your animation smoother and more fluid. Basically, by modifying the proportions of your object, it can make your object feel more elastic and flexible. So that's what I did to my player's jump animation and you can really feel the difference. Here I'll play it for you more slowly so you can see how much better it feels with squash and stretch. Next I took some time to tweak the run animation to look more dynamic because it also looked a bit stiff. The arms now feel more dynamic because they used to be still and the legs also move more realistically. The sword slash animation also got a makeover. I didn't change any of the base animation, but I did make the sword slash have more details and shading. You don't really notice it that much unless I slow the animation down, but it still makes the sword animation that tiny bit more fluid. And that was pretty much it for the changes in animation. I think this is already a big step to help elevate the game feel in our game. The most obvious path from this point on is to make sure our player movement feels good. Now currently the player just immediately changes direction when you switch inputs, but I wanted him to have a tiny bit of acceleration and make him a little bit more realistic. It's not very noticeable again, but these tiny changes add up over time and help contribute to the overall game feel. The next thing that I wanted to do was to add particles to the game because they are a great way to spice up the game feel in any game. For the particles in my game, I decided to pick up a crate called Bevy Hanabi. Bevy Hanabi uses compute shaders and lots of other obscure tech details to create a particle system that is performant and ECS friendly. I decided to use this crate because I didn't want to deal with performance issues from trying to rewrite a functionality that is pretty core and fundamental to most game engines. This is one of the few instances where I would suggest straying away from fully vanilla programming in order to achieve better optimizations. Anyway, you might notice that we don't really have anything done right now, it's just a sphere of particles that fade away slowly. So let's specifically start out by adding particles when the player changes directions or jumps. After some fiddling around, I managed to attach the system to the player by matching the particle system's translation to his translation. This isn't what we want, however, so after an embarrassingly long period of time, I managed to get this effect. It works by activating the system for a short while whenever the player jumps or changes directions. The particles are being provided a force that pushes them upwards over time from their almost zero velocity that they are given at the start. Now when you move the player around, he feels more satisfying and impactful to the world. Now we move into more difficult territory. It's pretty easy to focus completely on making your player movement feel good in your game. After all, it's quite simple to add a few particles here and there and change some platforms and values. But we need to remember that the actions that we take in the game also need to feel more appealing and satisfying to repeat. So what better action to tweak than the basic combat of the game? Let's optimize the satisfaction of smacking the hell out of enemies in the game. The first thing that I changed was making the tint fade slowly out of an enemy when it is invincible, instead of just disappearing in one instant. I really want my game to feel more smooth so that's what I started off with. Then I added some knockback to both the player and the enemy so the player has to adjust and space themselves accordingly to not get hit. Don't mention the fact that I don't have a health system for our player yet. I might end up removing this boss that we see on screen right now because it seems kind of underwhelming and boring to fight. The scale of it and the fact that there are two of them kind of makes it seem like a regular enemy so I might reincorporate them as a normal enemy in some platforming segments. It's still not fun fighting the enemy so the only logical step was to add particles. But I didn't want to get too caught up in the combat for now so I decided to move on because there were more important issues to tackle. 
Yes, I know, great problem solving. I definitely do think that the game feels more impactful after this change though. The main quirk I'm planning on giving this game is to add lots of unique weapons that players can craft and unlock. I'm also not going to be adding any movement abilities to the game. The player can reach new areas by unlocking or crafting weapons that have unique quirks letting the player traverse or enter new areas. So don't worry if the sword feels a bit weak, that's sort of the whole point. But this isn't a video detailing my future plans about the game. I wouldn't want them set in stone and we need to get back to working on the game feel. Visuals impact the game's enjoyment and game feel a great deal, so now it's time for me to make the game's art style and environment more appealing to look at. I changed the color scheme of the player from blue and red to red and this sort of dark blue because I didn't like how he looked. I don't know if this is just me, but the previous color scheme looked very unnatural to me. I also added this sort of red scarf thing around his neck because the previous scarf didn't cover enough surface. Now it's time to adjust our environment to look better. This next choice might be a little controversial, but I decided to simplify my scene a lot. I was wondering why my game looked so subpar when I finally realized something. My bricks, which were the main tile type in my game, had little to no shading and my game was not at all atmospheric. Using tiles for your background can only get so far, that's why my game lacked depth. This coupled with the fact that I didn't scale my tiles in the background to look farther away meant my game looked very two dimensional even with parallax. So what I did was hop into Photoshop, whip out the pencil tool and draw some layers that I used for my game's background. These layers would be moved at different speeds similar to my previous tile layers so that they would seem more three dimensional. I removed all of the tiles from my background because I felt like this does the job pretty well for now. I redrew my brick tile set into something that looks somewhat shaded and I think it fits the background much better. The parallax really makes the game feel more ambient and natural. Let me know what you guys think in the comments but I really like how this change went. I know I keep saying this but the art style and everything is going to change a lot because this is still very early development. Next I wanted to add a bit more juice to the game. So in tiled I added these bone objects on the ground. They're purely cosmetic and all they're meant to do is break when hit. I wanted them to shatter into lots of tiny bone fragments that are able to collide with the tile map when they break. I figured this would be really satisfying and a good starting point if I wanted to make other effects in my game. Evi Hanabi doesn't really have a robust way to support collisions yet, so I made my own particle system this time. Even if it did, now that I think of it, I wouldn't use it because none of my tiles are actually colliders. They're stored in an array and have grid based collisions. Adding colliders would more so hurt my performance than improve them even if I'm using Bevy Hanabi, which has all sorts of magic that makes it faster. For collisions, I just ran the function that I added to the player, but discreetly without interpolating from the old position to the new one. Later on, I might also make the particles check for collision less often to soften the performance load. But currently, it's not too hard on the performance, so let's leave it be. On the subject of particles, I decided to add some ambient particles around my scene to make it look more atmospheric. Honestly though, Bevy Hanabi is getting a little bit annoying right now. It doesn't provide an easily accessible way to control the rotation of its particles, which made the leaves that are spawning right now static. By easily accessible, I mean I can't find a way to do so. This is most likely due to my incompetency. I might end up just making a particle system in the future because ECS systems are pretty powerful on their own. I'm going to refrain from calling the particle system I made for destructible objects a particle system because it's really lacking performance optimizations and features. I understand Bevy Hanabi is experimental, but they should at least add rotation to the particles, right? Anyway, the scene does look a lot better and more atmospheric from these particles. After this adventure, as I was about to add camera shake to the game, I realized how cluttered my files looked. Up until this point, I had stored almost all of my files in one folder. I don't know if any of you know this, but I've never actually organized my Bevy projects into folders because they just weren't big enough to require that. I guess my lack of foresight really came back to bite me because I spent quite some time sorting out dependencies until I could put together a somewhat organized game structure. I know that this will really help me in the future and this little experience has taught me a very important lesson about doing things before they get unmanageable and how important it is to have the ability of foresight. Now though, it's really time to make camera shake. I decided to make the camera shake whenever the player hits the destructible objects because this is the only thing that I can reliably test it on for now. I could have tested it on killing the spider boss but that can wait. The boss probably isn't going to stay in the game for long because I think it's just really badly designed. And this is a more controllable thing that I'm sure to keep in the game. That way all of the settings and properties I made won't go to waste. Though I'll probably tweak this one a little bit because it seems a little too extreme. 
Post-processing is a great way to make a game look a tiny bit more polished. It's also easy to overdo so I settled on just adding one effect until the necessity arises for more effects. I decided on adding bloom to the game which sort of adds a glow effect to brighter pixels on screen. This makes it look more natural and is one of the most common effects in games. This is another effect that some people turn up way too high, so it's natural that I would end up adjusting the properties quite a bit. While I was doing this though, I realized a huge issue. It took an extremely long time for my game to compile. After wasting lots of time on this, I realized this was because I set incremental to false in my build settings. I had done this in an attempt to actually make my game compile faster, but it ended up backfiring. I had read this off an article online that said it would make your builds faster. What I didn't consider was this was only for specific use cases and I hadn't really read between the lines. And when you change small things, incremental really comes in handy. This experience taught me another lesson about how you should understand the implications of an action before acting. I'm still working on how to effectively decrease compile times for this project because it still compiles very slowly at times. Any suggestions in the comments would be helpful. With that done, most of our changes to improve game feel are already complete. I don't want this video becoming too long, so I figured this is a good place to stop. The next devlog will likely take a longer time to release because summer is over and I have less free time. So if you want to be notified when that drops, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Anyway, hope you have a good day.